Hey guys, and welcome to today's show. We are talking about something that's challenging for a lot of people. It's what people think about you. You gotta stop caring what everyone else thinks about you, and that's what we're gonna be talking about on today's show. So if you've struggled with holding up your phone, recording things in public, trying new things that may be a challenge, this is the show for you. So let's go get into the show. Hey guys, and welcome to today's show. Eric Hammond here of The Orange Stack. This is Facebook Friday. Thanks for being here every week as we show you guys how to grow your business, how to do more in real estate, and just how to be a rock star, right? How to be a rock star. So happy Friday. I love Fridays. They're a lot of fun for me. It's just a, a good pace for me. I love doing the show. It's a lot of fun bringing this value to you guys. So hopefully you've been watching the last bunch of episodes. I know we've changed it up. We're getting real professional here with our green screen and we've taken it indoors. And uh, most of it was because of the weather, right? The weather was kind of weird. I was tired of recording in the rain and we got a new camera and now we're rolling. So what I wanna show you guys though is that this is possible for you guys. Literally everything that we're doing right now is free. There's free software, free computer use. Uh, you probably already have a laptop and you probably already have a camera so you can do something just like this. So don't let things like technology hold you back. So guys, this is gonna be a fun show. Um, how are you doing? How's your Friday going? How has the week gone in real estate? Have you guys been able to crush your goals? I've been talking to a lot of real estate agents lately and uh, they're super busy. Like spring is here, houses are selling, open houses are going amazing, houses are getting under contract. We called on a property the other day that had 27 offers, day number one. Granted, it was less than $150,000 below market value. So, you know, there's that to play with, but still, it's a crazy market right now. There's some incredible things going on. So I'd love to hear about what your week's like, what you're working on right now, some of the things that you're struggling, and post a couple things down in the comments and I'd love to hear from you and just what it is that you're working on right now in your real estate business. And then also I'd love to know what it is that you're struggling. We try to create these topics for you. So I probably speak eight or nine different times throughout the month. It's, a, it's usually a busy month for me. We've had a couple off ones here and there. Um, but these these classes will range from one person in attendance, like we had yesterday, I had one of those, to several hundred people watching. And so it's nice to get a diverse group of people, hear what's going on in the real estate world, see what you guys are struggling with. And that's how I create the content for the show because I know some of the things that you guys are struggling with. And that's where this topic comes from today. So today we're gonna talk about not caring what everybody else thinks, okay? And you may think, well, how's this apply to me? I'm not quite sure that this is gonna be the show for me. Stick around, I guarantee there's something going on up here where you're thinking, man, I don't know if I'm willing to do that. Or I'm not willing to put on a show like Facebook Friday or Ask Eric or any of these things that might be a little bit more challenging for you. Remember, you're probably a one-stop shop. You are a real estate agent that runs your whole entire team. There's probably a few things that you might not be doing yet. Uh, and that's what we're gonna get in today is don't worry about what everybody else is thinking. Focus on you, focus on your strengths and get done the things that you know you need to do in this business to stay afloat and to sell more houses. So comment below, let me know what's your favorite part of the show. Uh, I'm excited to hear the comments. I love you guys' comments. They, they they get me excited. I Last night it was like 11.30 at night and I'm like replying to all these comments because we did a live class yesterday out in Temecula and we taught a bunch of agents how to create a podcast on Anchor. So if you're interested in podcasts, uh, man, Anchor is an incredible platform for that. So enough plugs for other things. Um, we're going to get into this right now. And so grab your notes. Let's, let's, let's get into your head for a sec. Okay. So I remember uh, growing up, I've struggled with being an extrovert. I've always been an introvert. I was the one who kind of like hid myself in the corner. I hated confrontation. I just, I wasn't the popular kid at school, right? And my wife's over here laughing at me because she knows that to be true. Uh, I've always been the introvert. I'd rather just stick to myself, do my own things. I kind of grew up uh, in the tech, you know, part of life. Got a computer when I was young. Just, that was me. I'm not the social butterfly like a lot of people that I know in this life are. And most uh, agents that I talk to are super social. They're outgoing, they're talkative, they're energetic, they can they can wow a crowd, all that kind of stuff. That is not me. I have morphed into this social butterfly that you're seeing right now, the one that's behind the camera right here and able to do these things and, and talk to you guys on a weekly basis. And it's a lot of fun for me. It's something that I've come to realize about myself is that I've embraced who I am and, and my strengths and my weaknesses. But what I realized is there's a lot of you still on that fence who are like, you know what, I like the transition or transaction side of real estate. I like working with the clients and helping 
helping them solve their problems, but I'm not the outgoing person. I'm not the, the talkative one who can go network at events and go put myself out there on the phone and go door knock and do all these challenging things. Uh, and it might be a struggle for you. You might have a hard time keeping up with these type of things. And that's, I think the beauty of uh, what we teach around here is you've got to focus on what you're good at. You've got to focus on the things that uh, that you have strengthened, you know, so whether it's getting in front of a camera or whether it's, you know, writing a blog uh, on your computer or maybe it's recording a podcast because you don't have to be seen, you don't have to worry about your grammar, you just talk and, and get it out there. Uh, some lady yesterday in the class, she's like, well, how do people see me? And I was like, it's a podcast. They're just, you're in their ears. You don't have to be seen. And she's like, oh, okay, I'm in. Uh, uh, great. <laughs> she was super excited about that. So you've got to be you, right? But at the same time, there's things that you probably need to start figuring out in your business and you probably need to uh, maybe put the blinders on for a moment and not worry about what other people are thinking. So I remember when we first started this show, if you go back two years ago, you can watch some of our first episodes. It was literally me with this phone and a tripod um, out in Carlsbad because that's where I live in San Diego County. And I remember trying to find these public places that were uh, remote for the moment. Like nobody was there. Nobody could watch me. I didn't have to be judged. I could just do my thing, right? So I'd find like beach bluffs or I'd go down to the water sometimes or I'd find these lagoons where nobody was. But the background is what I was trying to get. I was trying to get these really pretty backgrounds because I knew that that's what you guys wanted to see. You wanted to see that piece of California. So as I put my phone up, I'd be recording and talking to myself and then I'd start to see somebody show up on the screen and I was like, oh, I got to keep going because I'm live, right? I'm doing the live show and I can't just stop and be like, oh, someone's watching me. I better go somewhere else. And that's what I think the beauty of, of what Facebook Live did for me is it focused or it forced me to just kind of get out of my shell and do that uncomfortable thing. Uh, but I was super conscious or not conscious, but aware of uh, people in the background and people come in and I would get nervous about what they would think because I'm like, ah, oh, here's this dude talking, right? Who's he? What does he have to say? And that's where I struggled is because I started caring what other people thought. And that's what I want to get into your mind today is don't worry about what other people think. Focus on you. Focus on what you know. You're the expert of everything real estate in your area. You know the things that you know. You're knowledgeable. Whether you've been selling real estate for a year or 30 years. I talked to a lady the other day that was selling real estate for 45 years. She knows this business inside and out. I don't know that she's comfortable with video yet. She's probably still has a few things to work out with that, but she knows this business. And if you're, you know, 21 or 71 or somewhere in between, you've probably got the ability to do things that other agents aren't. Uh, you're willing to put yourself out there and, that, and that's what we're trying to talk about today. So I've got a bunch of notes. Uh, I wanted to kind of order them in a way that I could kind of tell a story, but I couldn't put them together uh, in a sequential story. So I'm just gonna kind of go through some of my bullet points here and let you know some of the thoughts that I've been feeling about this. Um, I think, you know, kind of to back up for a second, I think when we realize what the potential of our cell phone is nowadays, uh, our life will change. I remember when my dad got his first cell phone, it was probably back in the 80s, and he had this old beater Volvo, right, back in the day. And uh, it was one of those cars we bought from my mom's work because they were getting rid of some of their old cars. Uh, she was in insurance for a while, and uh, we bought this old beater Volvo. And we lived up in the Bay Area, and he had this phone. I mean, the phone was probably like a backpack nowadays. Like, it was huge, battery and everything. It had a cord you had to, like, attach to the battery. And the battery lasted for, like, 20 minutes. Like, it was a great cell phone. All you could do was call on it, by the way, too. So he's driving home one day and he's going over the Bay Bridge from this meeting and the Volvo breaks down on the bridge, right? So he's like on the bridge, broke down. Just imagine like the craziness of what that is coming into San Francisco. And this other car pulls up behind him and I was like, hey, you got to get off the bridge here and let me push you out of the way. So another Volvo, ironically, another Volvo pulls up right behind him and starts pushing him off the road. And he finally gets off into San Francisco and gets out of the way and uh, he gets on his cell phone back then and he calls for help. He called my mom and I was like, hey, can you find a tow truck and send him up here? I don't know, you know how to get a hold of a tow truck. I don't have a, a phone book in my car, obviously. So anyway, long story short, got off the bridge, got home, sold the car later. But that was the ability of what that cell phone could do back in the 80s. That was the 80s. That wasn't that long ago. And now from this little skinny phone that will probably last battery wise all day long, I can record a show like this. I can document my life from day to day in a vlog. I can communicate on social media platforms with the world that literally the, the world is at my fingertips. I can tell them anything that I want to. I can communicate any message that I want to. I can connect with anybody. I could literally send a message to the president of the United States right now on my phone. That's how incredible the technology that we have in our pockets every single day is. And once you realize that in your head and you realize how easy it is to communicate with your audience, 
the world is such an incredible opportunity. Because previous to this cell phone, back in the 80s even, let's just talk about that. When you did have a cell phone, you couldn't send a text to everybody in your farm. You couldn't post an image or a video to everybody in your neighborhood about an open house coming up. You had to go drop off flyers. You physically had to go knock on the door, ring their doorbell, pick up the phone and call them. All these things that so many real estate agents are still doing. And they still work to some degree, but they're definitely not the most effective use of your time. This is, okay? So once you understand that and you get that in your head, that this is the place I need to be, social media is where I need to build my brand, to be online, to distribute my content, the world changes. Okay, so understand that. Here's the other thing to consider. If you're hungry enough and you have the desire to do something and you haven't got to that plateau in your real estate business where you've made it and you're just like, ah, I'm just trying to keep things going. I'm trying to keep the wheels turning. I'm trying to make real estate just afford my lifestyle. You're hungry, right? When you're brand new in the market and you don't know anybody and you don't have any transition transactions under your belt and you're like, I got to go sell some houses. I got to pay my bills. I got to go feed my family. You're hungry. You're going to be willing to do anything. And I think when you're hungry and motivated and pushing yourself, you're going to try new things. If you're, and I hate to generalize, but uh, let's just say if you're 50, 60 years old and you've been selling real estate for over 10 years and you've got your kind of threshold in life, you've got your clients, you've got your business set up, you have a couple agents working for you, things are kind of just humming along. You just have to show up to work and you're going to sell 30 or 40 houses this year, right? You're probably not willing to do scary things like get on your cell phone and post a new video or go live on a show like this or try some new technology. So while you're young or while you're new in this area and you're still trying to make things work, trust me, I met 50 year olds who are brand new in this business and they're hungry. Age has nothing to do with it. But what has something to do with it is your drive and your momentum and what it is that you're willing to do to make the business happen. I remember when I first got my license here in San Diego, I was in Carlsbad, I was in my office. It was probably a little bit bigger than this table is right now. And I had a phone and I had a computer and I had some phone numbers and I had nothing else going on. And I knew that that phone was the best place that I needed to be. I didn't even have the budget to be creating Facebook ads back then. They were still pretty new, still trying to figure out how they worked. It wasn't the best place for me at the moment, mostly because I couldn't even afford a $20 Facebook ad. I had to get on the phone. I had to call. I had to make things work. And so I, they, they gave me a phone, uh, part of the office, and I, uh, I took a class so that they gave me all the FISBO and expired listings and so I could call those, right? And we had hundreds of them back then. So I was just calling all day long and and I was not comfortable to go out on appointments and list houses and meet with clients and so I'd actually just get the referral fee and team up with other agents in our office so that I could get the business and then give it to them and then get paid later so I'd just stay on the phone literally all day I'd show up at eight I'd do some affirmations jump up and down just er, I'm gonna do this today and then I would get on the phone and I would call 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 for like eight straight hours just one after another after another after another I didn't even have a dialer I broke my first phone. The seven key wore out because the zip or the area code here is starts with the seven. I broke the seven key, uh, and everyone in my office was laughing at me that I broke my phone. But that's where I had to start, uh, and I was hungry, and I hated the phone. It was scary. It was uncomfortable. It was something that I didn't want to do, but I was willing to do it because I had no other choices. So when you're hungry and you're watching this video. Take that momentum, take that action. Do the things that you might not be willing to do when times are good, when you have it a little bit easier, when you have money coming in and you have opportunities on your plate. Take advantage of the moment that you're in right now. It'll probably only last for a little bit. It may only last for six months. It may only last for two or three years, but be there in that moment and take advantage of the opportunity that you have, the willingness to do anything it takes to get your real estate business off the ground, okay? So that's another point. Here's something else to consider. And I love how I'm just kind of randomly doing these because they're not in any order at all. There's gonna be a lot of voices in your head. There's gonna be something in your head that says the phone's not gonna work or Facebook ads don't work or real estate's dying. You've gotta go down a different path, right? There might be other people in your life saying, why are you starting this real estate path? You know, technology's gonna take over. You're not gonna be able to sell any houses someday. Or you know what? There's already a better agent than you in this area. Why are you even trying? There may be a voice talking to you right now that's saying don't do it give up do something else you got to plug your ears drown out that voice and listen to yourself listen to what you want real estate's your goal and you're like I'm here to create an empire I'm here to be the master listing agent in my area and I'm gonna own this place listen to that voice talk to yourself motivate yourself get yourself going drown out the other voices in your head right now all the negativity that's coming Focus on the positive, focus on your strengths, focus on what it is that you can do to create these opportunities. So I wrote, 
focus on, if you focus on the negative things in your life, you're going to get negative things, right? If I'm like, oh, there's nothing for sale on my farm or houses never come up for sale or I can't convert the Fizbos or ah, there's so many people calling the expireds, they don't work. That'll happen. But if you say, you know what? I'm incredible at what I do. I have my scripts down. I know what to say when I show up on someone's door. I know how to close the Fizbo. I know how to do these things. I am a master listing agent. You're going to win. You're going to confirm to yourself that these are the things that are going to happen in your life and they're going to happen. It may not be overnight. It may not be over a week or two months or three months, but it'll happen. Eventually your mind will believe what you're telling yourself and it'll happen. There's so many incredible speakers out there that you can listen to that have the same message uh, that will resonate with you, that'll say, if you believe it, it'll come true, it'll happen. So talk to yourself in a positive way. Surround yourself with positive things. Right on the wall, like if you can see that way, I've got a bunch of positive things on the wall. Uh, one of the biggest ones says, I'm unstoppable. I can, I can do literally anything that I put my mind to. That's why I tell my girls every day, I can, I can do anything that I put my mind to. Anything's possible. Because if somebody else did it in this life, Meaning that if somebody is able to sell 400 homes a year or 1,000 homes a year or 10,000 homes a year, so can you. I remember probably it's probably 12 months after I got my license, uh, we went up to Long Beach and I had I got this private invite. There was like 40 of us who got to go hear this agent speak. And he was from the East Coast and he was doing his thing. Uh, but he was invited to come speak to our, us agents uh, at Keller Williams. And he literally, his team was closing 1,600 homes a year. 1,600 homes a year. It just blew my mind. I mean, getting to the point where I was selling 20 homes a year was just like, there's no way I'm gonna get there. That's two a month. How am I gonna get two transactions a month? It'll own 1,600. Guys, if he could do it, I can do it. And if he can do it, you can do it. So put your mind to what you wanna do, accomplish the things that you're after, and make it happen. Write down your goals. If you haven't, guys, it's already almost April. Write down your goals. Set the path of the things that you're gonna do this year and figure out how you're gonna make them happen. Okay. Here's the other part of this. That guy's incredible. 1,600 homes, that was nuts, right? Don't be too concerned with where you are right now in the path. If you're selling five homes, 10 homes, 15, 50 homes a year, and you're like, my goal is 1,600 homes, it might not happen this year, it might. I'm not gonna tell you yes or no. Uh, but don't worry about where you are. If you have confidence and you walk into that home and you say, I'm gonna get this listing appointment, people will judge you on your confidence and how you talk to yourself and how you look at yourself and how you own that opportunity. If you come in and your shoulders are down and you're like, oh, you know, I'd love to list this house. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm brand new. I don't know anything, but I really want it. Maybe. But if you walk in and you lay down your listing paperwork and you show them how you're going to get it done and you're like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. When are we going to sign and sell your house? Let's get on the market today or whenever that is. And you have that kind of confidence. They'll see that confidence. They'll trust you. So don't don't judge yourself and worry about where you are now. People don't care about where you are now. It's what you're going to be able to get done. So focus on your strengths. Focus on your abilities. If you need help, partner with somebody else in your office. Figure that out. But that's what's capable when you have that type of confidence. Okay. Whew. Where are we on here? This has been a good show so far. I hope that you're getting some good nuggets out of this. I think there's there's some good ones here, and I think that people need to hear this. Like I said, um, I, I, I speak to a lot of you each day. I have phone calls with you. I talk to you through text. I see your posts. I follow you guys. This is like, I, we, I'm so excited. We just hit 2,500 followers on our Facebook page yesterday. And I know for some of you, you're like, eh, whatever. There's people with millions of followers. True. But I'm super excited for the 2,503 followers when I checked last that we have now. Uh, and I'm super grateful for you. Most of those guys are, or most of you are real estate agents. You're following us because you love us. You're here for our advice. I appreciate you enjoying our journey and watching our show and being part of this content. And I know that it can help you. So if you haven't done so, and you're watching this and you're already at this point in this video, I don't even know how long we've been going live for, Follow us, go to our Facebook page, be sure to like and subscribe us, follow us. And then there's a little thing that says, how do I wanna be notified? Click see first, which basically means that you're gonna have the opportunity to see our post first. So what I wanna do is be on your device as often as I can. I wanna be here to motivate you in your ears, to speak to you, to pump you up, to get you excited when it's Monday morning and you're like, oh, I just wanna stay in bed. I wanna get you out of bed and get you going, get you back on the phone, get you creating content that's gonna help your business, okay? so. See first, like and subscribe, share me with somebody who needs to see this. Maybe you're an agent who's already selling 100 homes a year and you're still watching this because you're like, hey, this guy rocks, right? Share this with somebody in your agent who might be brand new, who, uh, who needs to see this, who needs to get off their chair, who needs to go knock some doors, who needs to get the ball rolling. 
bring them under your wing, show them how it can happen. Guys, when you give back to others, massive things happen for your business. Okay, so let's keep going. So if you worry about what other people are thinking about you, uh, you lost and that's it. Like I said, when I uh, was out there in the boonies, going live, recording my show, I was literally like this far away from my phone. Uh, I just remember again thinking, holy cow, I can't believe people might be watching me. I wonder who's around. I was always like, go back and watch those shows. It's kind of funny. I was super nervous. Uh, but if I would have worried about what those people thought, if I would have said, you know what, I can't handle the judgment. I can't handle uh, what people are thinking about me. I can't deal with people watching me out of the corner of the eyes or wondering what I'm saying or coming to talk to me. I would have quit. Guys, this I think is the 90th show on record. 90th show, do you understand what that means? And I know we had a bunch before I even started counting. I would say we've done this full time now for two years. It's probably about March when we started two years ago. And if I would have cared what other people think, we probably would have got to show three or four. It would have been a disaster and I would have quit. We would have had like 16 followers on that page. So I'm so grateful that I put my thoughts, my concerns, my worry about what other people think and I kept going, I kept pushing, I kept recording, I kept putting the phone up and I kept going live for you guys. Some of the shows were short, eight, 10, 12 minutes long, not so short. Some of them got to be 30 minutes. Uh, and, and the point is, is that I'm here to bring you guys as much content and as much value and as much push and motivation as I can because I know that great things are capable from you. I know you're capable of great things. So keep going, keep trying those things. When times seem hard and challenging, keep at it, be persistent. So what's fun is that as I recorded this show, I remember, so I'd go down to Oceanside and I'd be near the pier and I'd be on the jetty and I'd have these cool things in the background and people would kind of stand around and watch me. It was like I was recording some show that people knew, you know? So I had a, a group of people watching me sometimes. I'm, I'm talking like three, four, five people at the most. And they were nice and they'd wait. They wouldn't come interrupt the show. But after I'd hit end and I'd wrap up the show, they'd be like, what are you doing? Why are you, what are you recording? Who are you? You know, so it gave me an opportunity. I'd be like, oh, my name's Eric. I got this Facebook channel. I'm, I'm, you know, marketing for real estate agents. I'm just trying to help them out and show them what's possible. And they're like, oh, that's cool. My buddy's a real estate agent. I'll have to have them check out your page. I don't know if they ever shared it, you know, or anything. But what's cool is I drew a crowd and I got attention and people started watching me. And just imagine if you're out in your community and you're nervous and you got your little camera up and you're recording your show and you're talking about your farm and what's hot there and the restaurants that are going up and, and things that are going on and new parks and schools and changes in your community. You're talking about HOAs, you're interviewing contractors. You're gonna draw a crowd. People are gonna notice you. They're gonna start seeing your content week after week after week and they're gonna start asking questions and saying, who's that guy or who's that gal who's always recording stuff? Let me find out more. It's a lot of fun when you start getting that attention and it motivates you and it keeps you going. And it's, again, scary as heck at first, but after a while, it's a lot of fun and now I kind of look forward to it. Um, there was another show probably six months or so ago. Again, you can go back and, and check some of them out, but he literally like stopped walking by, turned around and was like, yeah, hey, watch this guy. Like he's in the show and it was so much fun. Uh, just those kind of memories of, um, of random stuff that happens. I mean, you never know when you're live what's gonna happen. And so you just gotta be ready for it. So find some challenging things, right? So we've talked about going live on Facebook. I think that that's an incredible opportunity. Uh, we talk a lot about here about video. So I think if you're good with video, even if you're not, like, here's my goal for you. If you're not comfortable with video, go try something that's not quite super intimidating. There's things called stories, right? So Facebook has stories, Instagram has stories, uh, YouTube, it's probably not available to you yet, but actually YouTube just started stories earlier this year. I think you have to have like 10,000 followers. So you may not quite be there yet, but YouTube has stories. Uh, anyway, so there's stories, right? And basically you can go create a 15 second little blah of video and you can share it with your audience. And it's gone in 24 hours, which is great because if you make a fool of yourself, who cares? Maybe only five people will see it. Maybe nobody will see it. But the point is, is do it. Get comfortable with it. Try it. Go try today to create a story. It's Friday. You're probably going to go out to eat somewhere tonight. You're going to have some fun. You're going to get ready for your open houses this weekend. Go make a story. Do some, you know, I don't know, background stuff. Do, uh, hey, I'm at a restaurant eating tacos. Just make it fun. Make it interesting and exciting. And go share a story to your social media platform and make it a video and be in the video. You know, don't just be looking at your food, but actually hold up the phone, be like, hey, we're eating tacos. And, and go do something a little bit out of your comfort zone. If it's in a restaurant or if it's in a public place, go for it, try it out. So get on stories, be comfortable with the video. Um, I said yesterday, we taught a class on how to make a podcast. Go look up Anchor, it's a pretty cool program. It's pretty easy to use, that's why I like it. You don't have to have a lot of skills. You literally just hit the button, record your podcast, hit stop, uh, and then you upload it and it goes to iTunes and Spotify and all these kind of places. So if you're like, oh, there's no way I could do a podcast, you have to do it, like that's the thing. 
you have to do it. You have to distribute your content in places that you're not. So go, go make video, go try a podcast, go hire a photographer in the next week and take some fun photos of you somewhere interesting or unique or different and post those up, right? Just start getting attention. Maybe this weekend you're like, you know what? I've always wanted to write a blog and I've, and I've wanted to start that. Spend a few minutes, get your thoughts on paper, maybe make it 500 to a thousand words. It's like an essay, right? Go write a blog, just share something. Here's why I love living in my town or top 10 reasons why you should move to this town and get it out there. Share it on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is such an incredible platform right now for organic reach. People are searching for your content right now. You don't even know it. So go do something that you haven't been doing that I've maybe shared with you before or you've heard from somebody else that you're like, I'm just not ready yet. Go try something hard because the confidence that you're gonna get from doing that challenging thing is gonna motivate you to do more. You're gonna do that podcast. You're gonna make that video. Your heart's gonna be beaten. You're gonna go, woo, that wasn't that bad. I survived. Now I can go do another one. Run with that adrenaline. Run with that pressure that you've just created and do something else. If you're afraid to get on the phones because you don't like talking to people or you don't like door knocking or you don't like holding open houses, go do something that you've been holding yourself back for. And once you get through it and you come out on the other side and you're still alive and you're like, oh, I can't believe I made it. You're gonna have so much energy from that moment and run with that and go pick two or three other things that you wanna try, okay? Go out and try new things. Stop caring what everybody else thinks about you. Stop caring who's watching. Stop caring what people in your office are saying. Stop caring what your family's saying. I mean, obviously you gotta listen to them and love them and coexist with them, but they shouldn't be holding you back. Hopefully they're not telling you to not get on the phone and hopefully they're not telling you to don't post on Facebook or whatever, but go find the positive people in your life who are gonna uplift you and push you. And if you need me to be that person, keep coming back. I'll motivate you, I'll push you, I'll inspire you to do hard things. But I appreciate you guys being here and I appreciate you guys following the show. I know that you know probably nobody cares about what you're doing. You might get a few people watching you and thinking, what in the world is this person doing? Why are they being so crazy? Why are they filming themselves or talking to their phone? You know what? It's becoming the new norm. If you've, if you've noticed, if you go to places, it's interesting. Um, I've been in a couple public places lately and people are literally just walking around like this or like this and recording themselves and talking to themselves. It's so fun now to see what world we're in where people just are so happy to share uh, their moments in their lives and what they're learning with other people. So. Go do something uncomfortable. Stop caring what other people think. It's it's going to push you, it's going to drive you, and it's going to catapult your business to new places. It's going to expose you to your audience and who you're looking to be around and the people that you can help. So go bring some value to your audience. Uh, guys, again, I appreciate you being here. Uh, I know we've had a few people stick around uh, on the show and I, and I appreciate you watching this all the way to the end. If you're watching the replay, thank you. Remember that we're live every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific and, and we do the show live. It's a lot of fun. I'd love to get into the point where you guys are commenting on the show and we can interact with you and engage with you and all that kind of stuff. So if you're here watching, shout out, give me a thumbs up, just let me know that you're listening and, and maybe we'll, we'll bring you onto the show someday and talk about you and what you're doing in your business and, and help bring some value to you. But anyway, guys, it's been a lot of fun. I appreciate you being here. Have a happy Friday. Go sell some houses. Make, make the most opportunity of where we are right now in the springtime. Go sell some houses. The market is changing daily. Things are gonna happen, so be ready for it. Okay, well, thanks again. Subscribe if you haven't. I appreciate you being here, and we will see you next time on Facebook Friday. Till then, have a great one. Bye, guys.